Welcome to the 2018 Do the Right Thing Challenge Recognition Ceremony. I'm Bill Bone, Chairman of the program in Palm Beach County, and now Do the Right Thing is conducted in the nation's largest school systems all over America. It's organized by community leaders, volunteers, philanthropists. Next, of course, you've already heard him is Judge Bradley Harper, who led the pledge. He attended Palm Beach County Middle Schools and now serves on the criminal court bench. He went to high school here, too. Uh, next is our superintendent of schools, and that's Dr. Donald Fenoy, who will step down to the stage and make a few remarks in just a moment. And to my immediate left is Rick Bradshaw, our sheriff, who is probably the most heavily invested person in the room when it comes to solving the problems of violence. And to my immediate right is Pepe Funhul Jr., executive vice president of Florida Crystals. This program is funded primarily by his family, Florida Crystals is a multinational company headquartered here in Palm Beach County. Please show your appreciation for all of the men and women on this stage, and especially for Florida Crystals and Pepe Van Hool. Thank you as you come to the program. Well, it's great to be with all of you here today. I would like to begin by thanking all of the participants of Do the Right Thing, to students, to teachers, to school principals, and the parents. Congratulations. I want to thank all of you for your essays. Your essays help us to really grasp how much physical and emotional pain, violence, and bullying can create in our lives. Experiences like the ones that you write about are important to discuss. They are relevant. They are relevant. They distress us. They make us sad. They scare us but they also help us to communicate and to take action. This is the 15th year that myself and Florida Crystals have sponsored and funded the Do the Right Thing Challenge. It's, it's hard to believe time has gone by so fast and how much it's grown. How many of you all in the room know what Florida Crystals does? What's it do? It creates sugar, and right here in Palm Beach County, and you can find our Florida Crystals products right here in your grocery stores under the names Florida Crystals, Domino, and our most recent offering, our South Florida rice called the Farm to Table Rice. Florida Crystals has, also does many other uh, agricultural activities here in Palm Beach County. For instance, we grow many of the vegetables that you eat here including the sweet corn, radishes, and lettuces, just to name a few. Please tell your teachers that you want to come out and visit us and to learn more about what we do. You will not regret it. It's a lot of fun to come out to our facilities and to our farms, and also to let you all know there's a great future in farming and in business right here in your hometown. Our story, the Florida Crystal story, is frankly, it's one of Cuban immigrants. Like many of you all, we all come from somewhere. My family came over from Cuba, and they restarted their lives and their families and their work right here in Palm Beach County 50 years ago. I have a friend here with me today who also shares a similar story to mine. He's also a Cuban American, and he has worked extremely hard in his life to achieve his dream. When he learned about Do the Right Thing, he asked me if he could talk to all of you, and you'll soon understand why. My friend has lived the American dream. Back when he was all your age, he was already reading and learning about great historical figures who fought for freedom. My friend is a huge advocate for education, and he really wants each of you to live a meaningful, happy, and productive life, and he always roots for the underdog. He has won many awards, more than I can name, including being a Grammy's winner. It is with great pleasure that I welcome and introduce to you Armando Christian Perez.
doing great, Armando. It's okay if I ask. Thank you for being with us today, Armando. You know, I want to start off by saying thank you guys so much. Really appreciate the opportunity to be here today. Uh, baby, thank you so much for the invitation. It's an honor. And, um, well, it's a true honor on my side, too. Guys, I'm going to make it short and sweet. Uh, we, we, we carved out a little bit of time to come here, and I'm going to tell you why. Uh, I'm a person that came up in the educational system as far as in the public school system. I went to about 25 different schools growing up. And going through all these different schools, Ironically, so since the kids are here, I want to make sure that I'm going I'm to speak to you from the heart. And um, I wasn't a troublemaker, but I was always around some trouble. <laughs> okay? And even when I felt that the system wasn't built for me, it was a teacher that changed my life. And her name, ironically, is Hope Martinez. Now, Hope Martinez saw something in me that I didn't see in myself. So it has a lot to do with do the right thing. Why does it have to do with do the right thing? Well, believe it or not, a pen changed my life. My mother always told me the pen is mightier than the sword. So due to a pen and a piece of paper, I could write records. And music was my escape. Me being a first-generation Cuban-American, have a grandmother that fought as a rebel, in what we call La Sierra Maestra in Cuba. I have an aunt that was a political prisoner. My mother came in Pedro Pan, Operation Peter Pan. And my father brought boats over in the Mario boat lift. So to be able to enjoy the opportunity and have the honor of this beautiful, priceless thing called freedom that gave me the opportunity to be able to be the American dream, live the American dream, and have this conversation with you guys. So you guys are not only special, because I know you had to work hard to get here, but you're leaders. And when you're a leader, you got to lead by example. I want to talk to you guys about a little something called technology these days, this thing called social media. Guys, a lot of y'all young may not have tattoos at this point, maybe want to get tattoos. You know, that's a cool thing, right? Well, you already got tattoos. It's called a digital tattoo. And this digital tattoo is going to be with you for the rest of your life. So what I want you guys to take from today is I want you to utilize technology and don't let technology use you. I want you guys to not worry about two words. Can you believe we live in a society that's driven by two words right now? Followers and likes. I ain't grew up following anybody. I grew up idolizing people. I grew up looking up to people. So I want you kids to take this message and spread the gospel. Why? Because we need two words. Instead of followers and likes, we need to implement another two words, which is leaders and unique. And you guys are leaders and you're unique. And what you're doing here today is making history. And the reason that I came out here is because I don't need to speak to y'all to relate to y'all. All I need to do is look at you and I understand your story one way or another. Me growing up in Miami in the 80s, yeah, I grew up around a lot of interesting characters. <clears throat> you know, I could have took the wrong route, but we are, we are, all of us know what that route, what it embodies, prison or death. And if you're snitching, you might as well be dead. You're a dead man walking. So music was my savior. Music was my escape. And look how easy it was. A pen and a paper changed my life. So you guys already took that step. And I wanted to come here and let you know how important it, it is and it will be in your life. So to everybody here, we have a saying in Spanish, which is paso corto vista larga, which means short steps, long vision. Okay? And for everybody out here that's living in this world of technology we're living in right now, it's making things happen real quick, real fast, which we call instant gratification. And to anybody here, that wants to be successful in life, I know you hear it all the time, but it's the truth. Hard work pays off. There's no cutting corners. There's no cheating the system. There's no magic formula. There's no silver bullet. Hard work. And the reason that I stand here and have this conversation with you, because I've been 
I've been very, very blessed. And when I say I, I mean we, I mean us. There's no way I do this by myself. I have an amazing team, and we all have the same vision and a common goal. But there's no way I'd be able to be here today and be a part of this thing we call the music business, which has been shrinking, and we've been growing. So for us to grow in a shrinking business, you know why we did that? Because we outworked the whole music business. And for everybody out here, especially kids, I know what it is to be cool. I know what it is to be down. I know what it is to, you know. Now the kids, they use words like Gucci and lit. I get it. Don't worry about it. Because if anybody knows how to get off the chain, off the glass, off the flip, off the rip, off the everything, you're looking at them. But there's no future in cool. Show me your friends and I'll show you your future. Dime con quien tu anda y te digo quien tu eres. These are little things in life that you're going to hear over and over again. And I just hope that you understand, that I understand, because I've been there, done that, and that's why I say it in the record. For those that go through tough times, believe me, been there, done that. But every day above ground is a great day. Remember that. So for everybody here, I just want to say, baby, thank you so much for having me. To so all the teachers and the administrators and principals that make this happen, thank you guys, because you guys are the true heroes. Thank you for believing in these kids. Thank you for going out of your way for them. And we all know when it looks like what these budgets look like. And I know you guys dig in your pockets and you guys go out of your way to make sure because you believe in these kids. Thank you for that. So with that said, it's a true honor. Thank you for the opportunity. To everybody here, remember your leaders and you're making history. And take advantage of this opportunity. The pen is mightier than the sword. A pen and a piece of paper changed my life. Believe me, you, I could have been somewhere else. So to all of you guys, once again, it's an honor. Hold on, I think that's, that's the president trying to call me up right now. <laughs> To everybody here, once again, I just want to tell y'all, I'm proud of y'all. Keep up the hard, the good work, hard work, work harder to work smarter. So to everybody here, it's Mr. 305, better said Mr. Worldwide, checking in, checking out. God bless you. Muchas gracias. Armando, thank you so much. Thank you for being here with all the finalists and for honoring them. That is quite a surprise, Pepe Van Hool. Thank you. Thank you, Pepe. Thank you, Armando. Ah, very special. The Van Hools did it for us again. You know, this year we have 33 middle schools participating in Palm Beach County. Students share their personal experience with about violence by answering the same three questions each year starting in middle school, sixth grade. It's fascinating for us to see how the students become more mature and more capable in their answers as the years go by. Another important part of this program is the conversation that these essays inspire in the classroom and in the community. This program works because every adult in this room, and especially the classroom teachers, as Armando said, care about you students and want your life to be healthy, rewarding, and safe. The teachers can feel very overwhelmed with the mandate, so we are particularly grateful that so many classroom teachers voluntarily incorporate this writing exercise with their demanding schedules. This year, we had 32,578 students take the challenge and even more participated in the classroom discussions. And we have this level of participation in this program because of the teachers, as Armando said. And you know what? This is also National Teachers Recognition Day. So I want all the classroom teachers, all the teachers, stand up. Stand up if you're a teacher and be recognized. Thank you, teachers. Now, at this point, will the principals with 90% participation or better at their school please line up over here on my left with program coordinator Brian Labadee as we wave goodbye to Armando. 
Thank you, Armando. So we're going to have, here's Brian. If you're, a, if you're a principal and your school had 90% participation, line up over here. Now, I'd like to recognize some other distinguished guests in the audience. If we'll have, please, we've got three of the elected school board members here. We have Dr. Deborah Robinson. Stand up here, Dr. Robinson. Can we have the lights down front? And Karen Brill and Erica Whitfield. Here's Karen, Dr. Robinson, and uh, Erica Whitfield. Thank you. Appreciate members of the school board. In addition to the head table, who we've already introduced, I want to uh, recognize some other members of our, our steering committee. Please hold your applause. Uh, Don Carson is on the national board, and he's a founding member of our local committee. Sandy Jinks is the principal at Palm Springs Middle School. Diana Fetterman is the director of secretary of education. And Julianne Rico is the general counsel for the school district. Thank you to these people who are on our steering committee. Dr. Fenoy, sir, you have the stage. Yes. Um, so first of all, let me say how honored and humbled that I am to be here in front of all of these amazing minds who have taken an opportunity to express themselves. I'd like to thank Florida Crystals and Bill Bone for this amazing event to my school board, for trusting in me and allowing me to be here, and to our principals. Um, all I can say is, wow, you know, how wonderful it is to be in a position to create the conditions in which you, the kids, get the opportunity to express yourselves. I'll say this, similar to our wonderful guest speaker with a wonderful haircut similar to mine. Um, when I was your age, you know, the world was different. And so I also was one of those people who expressed themselves, but mine was through music. I, you know, I ultimately went on to Florida A&M University to be in the band. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead, give an applause for that. Give an applause for that. Um, but I'll say this. When I think about what it's gonna be like when I'm too old to take care of myself, you give me hope. Every adult in this room needs every child here to reach their full potential. Because at some point, I won't be able to take care of myself. And my hope is, whether it's me or my grandchildren, that someone in this room will remember the day that one of your principals or the teacher was there to create an opportunity for, the, for you to be great. So let me say this to you students. I want to say thank you. Thank you for just being you. And thank you for taking this time out of your wonderful day to come spend some time with us. Let's celebrate some of our schools who did great. All Thanks right. Us. Thank you, Dr. Fenoy. If you are in this room today, count yourself as lucky. You cannot get a ticket to this lunch. You must be invited. And in order to attend this luncheon, your school must have over 50% participation of your students take the challenge and write an essay. So if your school had 90% or better, you receive a trophy for your efforts. And this year we have a record 22 middle schools with over 90% participation. As your school principal comes forward, please feel free to cheer your school with 90% participation. Two schools, Emerald Cove Middle School, Dr. Eugenia Feeman, and Bach Middle School of the Arts, Sally Rosinski. With 91% participation, Hal Watkins Middle School, Dr. Don Hoffman Principal, 91% Omni Middle School, Gerald Ripple, Principal. With 92% participation, Watson B. Duncan Middle School, Philip D'Amica. Also at 92%, Woodlands Middle School, Dr. Enrique Vila. With 93% participation, Lake Worth Middle School, Mike Williams, Principal. With 94% participation, Crestwood Middle School, Stephanie Nance. With 96% participation, Boca Raton Middle School, Principal Peter Slack. With 97% participation, Palm Springs Middle School, Sandra Jinks, Principal. And in honor of this day and this school, which has been the only school to participate in our program every single year since our inception, we remember their longtime Do the Right Thing school coordinator, Marbill Collins, who passed away this year. Thank you, Sandy Jinks, in honor of Marbill. Also with 97% participation, Krista McAuliffe Middle School, Edmund Capitano Principal, and Eagles Landing Middle School, Joseph Pesea Jr. With 98% participation, Western Pines Middle School, Robert Hatcher. 
Principal Hatcher, thank you. 98%. Wellington Middle School, Blake Bennett, Principal. With 99% participation, L.C. Swain Middle School, James Thomas, Principal. And Dr. Fenoy, it is amazing, and I have the privilege to tell you that six schools have perfect 100% participation. Can you imagine chasing down every student in your school? Welcome, Carver Middle School, Kawana Alexander Prophet, Principal. Don Estridge High Tech Middle School, Rachel Capitano, Principal. Jupiter Middle School, Lisa Hasley. Osceola Creek Middle School, Nicole Daly. Polo Park Middle School, Ann Clark. And Trade Winds Middle School, Rebecca Subin. All right, principals, all of you get here in the middle so we can get your pictures. Around this way, principals, move aside with Dr. Vinoy. And we got a picture, Tracy Benson. All right, there we go. These ladies and these gentlemen make this program possible in Palm Beach County. Let's hear it for the principals and administrators of Palm Beach County Middle School. Every middle school and county is represented. Thank you, teachers. You can return to your tables. Now, we will recognize the main group of honorees today, the top 10 students from each middle school who are here in this room. They were chosen because each have something very important to say about this problem. You represent the top 1% of the entire middle school population in Palm Beach County. Will all the top 10 students in the room from every one of the 33 schools please stand at this time and be recognized by your teachers, by your parents, and by the administrators. Now I'll tell you why you're standing, students. Reach over, bend down, and hug that parent or that adult that you came with today. They need some love. All right. Thank you. You know, every year we are amazed at the essays we read from these top students. The things they experience are often heartwarming, sometimes sad, but always enlightening. Now, to give everyone a little idea of what some of these students are feeling, we engage the help of local professional actors to read short portions of actual essays submitted by the students in this room. Please note that what you are about to hear are the real, untouched words of selected students. Although the chosen selections are just a small part of any particular essay, no words have been altered or changed from what a middle school student put on paper as part of this program. Listen closely. You may be surprised. No one should stand alone. Tell your story. 
make your mark. Last year, I was on a soccer team. My coach even took my teammates and I to eat after the game sometimes. But a few weeks after the season ended, my mother read an article that said that my coach was a predator. You are not worthless. You are not hurting alone. We, we stick, stick together. We tell our story loud and proud. Chains pull at his ankles and cover his arms. He's pushed into a locker, mind-blaring alarms. Taunts surround his mind, every word like a stone. Both his heart and pride are crushed. His pleas go unanswered. Mercy is dethroned. A joke to them, a nightmare to him. Why is it so hard to do the right thing? I witness this happening, but what should I do? Do I stop my classmate from screaming? Should I face my peers' hate? Befriend others if they are alone. You never know what's going on at home. We all deserve happiness, and that's just a fact. So stand hand in hand and have each other's back. Shout it from rooftops until your voice rings. It's always okay to do the right thing. My history starts in my country, Honduras. Everywhere in the world, there are bad people. One day, I was going to school and two men approached me. They said I had the right age to sell drugs. I told my mother about it, and that is why she decided to come here with me. We left home at 5 a.m., so my siblings could not notice that we were leaving. It made me so sad, but we had to do it. We reached the Guatemala border, then Mexico. And then after that, we took a train when immigration started a big shooting, and we had to hop off the train and run through a desert area. My mom was very thirsty, so she had to drink water from a canal which streamed cow's urine. She was very afraid because we could not take the train again. Months went by in our trip until we reached Tijuana, when a policeman said that he would take us to immigration unless my mother paid him money or had sex with him. He was molesting her when my mom asked for help to another policeman who did rescue her from the station. My mom got very sick. I asked for money to buy food and buy her medication. A man approached us and told us that he could help. We had to leave at 5 a.m. carrying backpacks with drugs, climbing high mountains. One day, he sent us to a market to ask for money. Buses were passing by, and a lady gave us 200 Mexican pesos. I told my mother it was our opportunity to pass the border, and we did. My mother did not want to come to this country. She just wanted to provide a better future for me. I believe in God that one day, my family will be reunited with me. Seek God first, and he will be with you in the good times and in the bad times. My history starts in my country, Honduras. This is not all my story. But it is my pleasure to share a part of it with you. Second grade, I sat on this colorful carpet that had the alphabet written on it. It was my turn to read out loud to the class, and I pronounced one word wrong. Fish. Last year, in sixth grade, kids made fun of me because I do dance and figure skate. Plus, I don't like a ton of normal boy stuff. I was called fat. Weird, Kylie Jenner, and more. Be, be, be quiet, he said. It'll be fine, he said. If you tell, I'll kill you. 
Besides, would you want your father going to prison? You must be good at math. Speak English. Your language bothers me. You must like curry, right? Do you have a criminal record? Are you gonna blow this mall up? Do you listen to rap? I love Biggie. I bet you work as a nail technician. Can you take that thingy off your head? It's making me feel uncomfortable. I just don't like it. On October 1st, 2015, my older brother Kelly was in a car wreck. I had to go to the hospital and see my brother in a coma before he died. The cause of this wreck was from someone not yielding to the right away of my brother. If the person was paying attention and not in the hurry, the wreck wouldn't have happened and my brother would still be here today. Every single day I think of my brother, my family is not the same as it used to be. We had to go through over a year of going back and forth to court for the criminal trial and the civil case. I have hatred for this person for making my life miserable. There are so many people doing things like smoking, drinking, doing drugs, talking on the phone, texting. I think that before you get your driver's license, you should have to go to the hospital and see people who have been in an accident and speak with families that have lost a loved one. When, when I, I was, was in the, the second, second grade, grade, I saw the news story about the Sandy Hook elementary school shooting. I wondered how 20 kids could be dead at a school. I beat my feet against the floor, thud, 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 till the dark red blood spews from my new nubs. I bang my head into the wall, thud, 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 till the crimson drifts drop silently into the mud. I punch the glass window, thud, clash, crush, the glass shatters, and my fist flies past the panes again and again with no end in sight. I rage against the night, violence incarnate, fury in human form, flesh and blood storm. No sanity for this mad refugee, just blood and gore. Brothers and sisters painted in beautiful shades of brown, attacked with words and knives, and surrounded by people marching with torches, spewing hatred, chanting slurs. White skin insulates me from injustices spewed on others. Yet I am young, and I am female. That alone delegitimizes my word against others. Young victims of rape, the accused walk free. We are left to wither in a prison of hurt and shame, a system ripe with injustice toward those least able to defend themselves. We must stand strong. We must stay free. We must fight for those least able. Injustice will bow down to justice at last. 
I have been living in West Palm Beach on the streets for as long as I can remember. I have seen more crimes than you can imagine. I remember I was young out wandering near a lake and I found a Glock 17 9 millimeter pistol. I have done drugs and other things that I shouldn't do as a kid, but I never thought that it was bad. I've been in many fights. What I do know is that I want my life to be better. I want to go to college and build a good future for myself, but I don't see that happening with my track record. I am capable of greatness. I have just been dealt cards out of my control. You are not worthless. You are not hurting alone. We stick together. We tell our stories loud and proud. Violence has affected my life in ways that will stick with me forever. Maybe violence will be what inspires me to change my life in hopes for a better future. Better than bacon. What? what? Huh? Bacon? That better than bacon. 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 Okay. believe, but all of the words you heard were written by the students in this room. Now, it involves a serious effort for a school to fully participate in this program, which is why we give each school a little token of thanks and appreciation. Every principal, every principal of all 33 schools will receive a $500 no-strings-attached grant from the William Pitt Foundation. After the lunch, each principal goes to the back of the room. You tell them who you are, and they'll give you that check. We thank the Pitt Foundation for this. Here in Palm Beach County, we publish the writings of the top 10 students from each of the 33 fully participating schools. Now, the books are on your table. Unless there is a special reason for your family to have more than one copy, we ask that each family take only one copy of the book. Principals and teachers should also take a copy, and we request that you put, put this book in your school library. It's an enormous expense and task to publish a book, but the steering committee and the sponsors believe it is important that everyone who cares about youth violence has an opportunity to read about the causes and the solutions of this problem from the students themselves. The entire cost of this publication is underwritten by the Palm Beach County Sheriff, Rick Bradshaw, who joins us today. Rick Bradshaw keeps us safe here in Palm Beach County in addition to protecting you and me. His team also protects the President. Having been elected and re-elected by record margins, he has an unblemished lifetime career in law enforcement and is a close friend of many people in this room, including me. Please welcome and give your thanks to Sheriff Rick Bradshaw. Thank you, Bill. Good afternoon to everyone. It's an honor to be here and be involved with this program, and you have my commitment to be here every single year and make sure this book gets published. Thank you, Sheriff. Without a doubt, this is a day about communication, and I wanted to take a minute to tell you about a very important tool that we've developed to make sure that you can communicate, not only in writing, but communicate with us. Like Pitbull said, this is the age of technology. Because of what happened in Broward and the fact that information fell through the cracks down there and wasn't uh, acted upon, I wanted to make sure that that didn't happen in Palm Beach County. So the Sheriff's Office has developed an app to go on your phone. You may have heard about it. It's called Student Protect. It's free. It doesn't cost you a dime. We didn't charge anybody to develop it. We will pay for every single download that is ever downloaded. But you need to get this on your phone. What this app does for you when you open it up is give you some options to be able to talk directly with the school police, with law enforcement in your jurisdiction, and more importantly to the sheriff's office. And you can talk to us about anything, whether it's bullying, whether it's some people that you're around, fellow students that you may have some emotional issues with, people that may be on the internet that you've seen that are saying things that trouble you, and you can do this anonymously. But the main thing is you have an avenue to directly 
communicate with us and not through a third party. And we're going to promise you that we will act on this information. And it's not about arresting people. It's about getting them the help that we need. Because we have a mental health unit in the sheriff's office. And if people have issues that need to be dealt with, we'll make sure that the mental health unit gets to them. So the main thing I want you to understand is we listen to what you have to say. It's important to what you have to say to us, obviously through your writings. But you also have a method to communicate with us directly and be assured that you can do it anonymously and people will take it seriously and get the help that you need. So thank you for staying engaged. Don't become the silent majority. Keep standing up for what you believe in. And parents, make sure that your kids stay safe and on, focused on the right track. Thank you very much, Bill. Thank you, Sheriff, for this book. It's, I think it's something that, we'll, that you should treasure for the rest of your life if you're in this book. Now, you should know that all 32,578 of the writings were involved in the judging process. The first level of judging is at the school where the principal and the teachers picked you, the top 10 from your school. After that selection process, uh, we then go on to the next level. But you need to keep in mind that what's most important to the participants, to the, the people who sponsor this program, is not the writing style or your grammar, although we want you to do that correctly. It's not the rules and the punctuation. It's really the message that you have to say. The 330 students who are in this book are then judged again by the various reading and ranking committees. And these are organizations who all have a stake in addressing the problem of youth violence. And we, we feel this process is important because of this reason. It gives these members of the community, these leaders, a chance to hear and understand what students are saying about this problem. So when you were chosen to be in this book and when the sheriff published it, that writing, your writing, was then disseminated to dozens of other organizations and people. And I want to thank the volunteers from the sheriff's office who helped read and rank all of these writings, the state attorney's office, the public defender's office, Palm Beach County Youth Services, the office of Congresswoman Lois Frankel, the office of Congressman Alcee Hastings, and of course Florida Crystals Corporation and your employees read these writings. And from that we were able to narrow down the top five girls and the top five boys who were chosen independently through the combined efforts of all the reading and ranking groups. The final 10 were then interviewed in person by a panel of judges from each of those reading and ranking organizations that I just named. Please hold your applause while I introduce the judges who participated in the final phase of the selection process. And judges, will you please stand, if we can have a little light in the room, that's Judge Bradley Harper, who was chairman of the Boys Committee, and Lynn Powell from Dave Ehrenberg's office, who was chairman of the Girls Committee. And the individual judges were Schnell Tong from Kerry Howitt's office, Kim Mazowskis, who is the anti-bullying prevention coordinator with the Department of Safe Schools, Joe Holcomb from the School District Department of Secondary Education, Paulette Burdick, Mary Simpsis, a New York Times best-selling author, Charity Lewis with the office of Congressman Lois Frankel, Dan Liffman with the office of Alcee Hastings, and Dodger, Arp, Dodger Arp, excuse me, a local family law attorney. Thank you to our judges for your time and energy and wisdom in the selection process. Now, if you're one of the five girls and five boy finalists, please line up over here, leave your seat now, and stand there with Mr. Labadee. The two ambassadors were selected on the basis of personal interviews, the stories, and lessons offered by the final 10. Those final 10 students are then transformed into an original film that is used as an instructional tool for next year's challenge. We are premiering that film today, and you are the first to see it. Hear their story. I remember the time exactly when I got beat up. Yeah, that hurt badly. I came home that day all slouchy, took it out on my siblings, and was very grouchy. After a few weeks had passed, I knew this freedom wasn't going to last. Happened again with a new group of boys. They picked me up and threw me down, like a toy. But that's not all. It wasn't just physically. They also found ways to ruin me verbally and mentally. They call me names like retard. Don't they understand that they're making my life so hard? And yet again, I came home the same way. 
furious and sorrowful, just like the other day. I ask God, why do I deserve to be treated this way? I have enough troubles with them calling me gay. Dear God, please tell me why. Sometimes I feel as if the right choice is suicide. This is a picture that we saw earlier. This seems to be a young person uh, in handcuffs. That mother and the sheriff here tonight telling us they are extremely frustrated, saying the system simply isn't working. I grew up with my mom and my dog and my dad. Then my dad passed away when I was seven on Thanksgiving. Um, his car set on fire and um, while he was in it. Well, my experience in violence is that um, I've been picked on for, you know, what I dress or whether it's um, my features, like my nose or my ears, or just things like that, like, you know. My dad had to go to Trinidad to do some stuff, and in the process, he had to go help someone, and he got shot. I was at my stepsister's baby shower party. Her boyfriend used to be in, like, a part of a gang. He had some friends that were, like, mad at him, had problems with him, so they they came to his baby shop. Violence affected in my life when my baby brother died. My stepfather, um, I think he killed him. You know, violence can be as small as an argument or as big as, you know, world wars. It doesn't matter, but it can really affect someone's physical, mental, emotional state. In my neighborhood, the phrase, snitches get stitches, um, People usually use it so that way the person doesn't tell um, an adult that they did something bad to them. Um, my dad would like say that I couldn't pursue any of my dreams or um, do what I wanted to when I grow up. The friends that are doing bad things, they go hang out on the streets with drug dealers and gang members. They look up to them and they teach them bad behavior. Do the right thing. Students in Palm Beach County took the challenge to express their thoughts and feelings. These 10 finalists personally experienced violence that changed their lives. Their stories include stereotyping, racism, death, bullying, mental abuse and physical harm. Oftentimes we think of youth violence as just physical, but the scars of bullying and emotional abuse can last a lifetime. Do the right thing is not a competition. Students are challenged to examine the impact of violence in their lives through classroom discussions and a written response to these three simple questions. How has violence affected your life? What causes youth violence? What can you do about it? We celebrate all the teachers, students, parents, and supporters of Do the Right Thing. We honor the ambassadors of our district, one girl and one boy, who will visit Washington, D.C. this summer and join students from across America in the national recognition events. By sharing their stories, they rise above individual challenges and inspire us to change. Is there a true story in your life that needs to be told? Everyone can make a difference. Everyone can do the right thing. These kids are amazing. It is our sincere hope that their stories encourage others to rise above their circumstances and live out their best life possible. As an author, what I love about the Do the Right Thing program is that it gives students a chance to tell their story and send their words out into the world. My personal experience with youth violence is bullying and it does not feel great. They just started fighting. Somebody shot the gun. The causes of youth violence are violent video games, videos. If students are not given affection, they can turn it on others, which no student should be in that situation. I think the cause of youth violence is people jumping to the fact that they think harming someone's physical, mental, or emotional state will get them to the 
solution that they want. Sometimes people are growing up and they'll be growing up in abusive households. I see the news as, you know, a perception of what's going on is if you realize, you know, how governments speak about different races, all different kinds of races, it makes people believe that that's what's happening. I think that the causes of youth violence are that people feel insecure and don't want to say what they mean and feel to others. concerned about violence. And we would learn a great deal if we listened to what the boys and girls have to say. Theirs is a generation that is not waiting to make a difference. They are making a difference now. It's a hurtful thing for children to not feel safe in their community and have to worry about if they can go outside and play freely without someone pulling out a gun or trying to kill someone for whatever reason. My brother, who lived in Colorado because he's an adult, he had a family, uh, he was murdered by two um, minors. They were both 16 years old. Teenagers shouldn't have the right to bear arms because it could get out of control, because stuff going on at home and stuff can go bad and they can let out all that anger on shootings at school and stuff. Just like how most plants grow when we feed it water and sunlight, violence grows when we feed it hatred and negativity. Sharing our stories helped us become better friends. Take ideas from uh, kids to see how we can improve um, like stuff that happened in our country to see if, if they have any ideas. I will try to be a role model and encourage my friends to do the same so that we can work together towards ending youth violence. This film was created by a local education film company called Studio Space under the direction of Dominic Gionetti and Lucas Stein, utilizing the help of Logan Rodowski, a film student at Dreyfus School of the Arts. And at this moment, those guys, Dominic and Lucas, are actually working this event somewhere out there. Uh, where are you guys? Wave your hands. Thank you for putting together this film. I see in the back of the room, thank you very much. We also owe an incredible debt of, of, of obligation to your mentors in the film business, and that is uh, the uh, Palm Beach Film Institute Chairman, William Metzger. William Metzger is a crucial member of our steering committee, and he is also here. Bill Metzger, will you please give us a wave? We really, every year, are responsible. There you are, Bill. Thank you, Bill Metzger and the Palm Beach Film Institute for putting all of this together. And now, it's time to meet the stars of that film who are coming onto the stage now so that Pepe Van Hul can go down to the front, if you will, please. Um, and congratulate them personally and present each finalist with their prize money. Uh, I don't know, do you have the checks? Okay, so we'll give them the prize money at the back, but Mr. Van Hool is going to congratulate you as we ask you to step out one at a time. The list of finalists are fourth runner-up boy from Bach Middle School of the Arts, Julian Boudry, and the fourth runner-up girl, also from Bach Middle School, Charlotte Sobrian. Fourth runner-up. Third runner-up boy from Omni Middle School, Jacob Flax. And third runner-up girl from Carver Middle School, Rose Etienne. Second runner-up boy from Western Pines Middle School, Abdul Wadad Ali. And second runner-up girl from Lake Shore Middle, Jada Lovely. The first runner-up boy from Palm Springs Middle School is Gabrielle Cardenas. And the first runner-up girl from Independence Middle School is Lily McGrath. And the Palm Beach County Do the Right Thing Ambassadors for 2018 who will attend the national ceremony this summer in Washington are Ambassador Justin Hirsch, a seventh grade student from Emerald Cove Middle School, and Ambassador Anushka Scudder, an eighth grade student from Boca Raton Middle School. And here they are, your top 10 finalists.
You can step together for this photograph with Pepe Fun Hool, please, in the middle. Justin, step aside for, uh, for Anushka. There, thank you. Thank you for this photograph. Thank you, finalists. Or you can return to your seats. At this point, we have one more short segment of our professional actors reading a few more of the selections of the students' work, and then our banquet will be over. I am 12 years old and the youngest sister of Benjamin Harris. I am very well aware of what happened and I know all about these animals who killed him. I'm scared, sad, and angry. Even though I lived in Florida and Betty lived in Arizona, we still kept in touch and saw each other once a year. My favorite memory is when we are on a cruise to Mexico and I got a slice of chocolate cake from the buffet. I was on the deck eating it and Betty smushed my face into it. While he was sleeping, I went back to the buffet to get more cake. I carefully smeared some frosting all over him. <laughs> we had fun playing tricks on each other. I want everyone to know that I am a 12-year-old kid whose life has been torn apart. 12, but I will never, under any circumstances, be weakened by the murder of my brother. I will grow stronger and smarter because of this. God gives the hardest battles to the strongest soldiers. There will be scars, and, and they fade, but I don't
don't think my scars will fade for a very long time. Benny was the most loving, kind-hearted man I know. He didn't deserve this. None of us did. A girl named Corey. She is 14 years old now. He knew he was different all her life. When he was little, he loved dolls and playing dress up. He loved painting nails, and his favorite was wearing his mom's heels, only in the house, never outside. He didn't have many friends. In fifth grade, nearly every day, he came home crying. So his parents took him out and decided to homeschool him. He said, Mom, I am a girl. He asked to wear a dress and high heels to the store, and his mom said yes. It felt amazing until a woman in the store started taking pictures of him on her phone. Another lady was pointing and laughing. He felt stupid, like a freak, like a misfit. His parents found a therapist who worked with other transgender kids. He started taking female hormones, the happiest day of her life. She said she wanted to go back to school. She was scared, but felt ready. Her mom found a small school and set up a meeting with the principal. He was awesome. He even let her use the girls' locker room and bathrooms. She played on the girls' soccer team. A girl named Corey is happy now. Hashtag, I am a miss. For six years, I have been lost in a dark place where I won't return. I lost blood and tears there, and I would like to get them back. But the wolf who stole them is guarding them. The wolf that made me suffer. The wolf that made me lose my mind. The wolf that hid away the real world. The wolf that chained me up to stay I loved him, but now he has nothing that I could love. He hurt me, he scarred me. I have something that he gave me. It's, it's a mask with a smiley face. I wear that mask every day. Underneath the mask I shall never show, for it is an infection, so it will Does he want to hurt me more? Or does he want his son back? Whatever it is he wants, he can't have me. I'm, I'm a person, not a play toy. I thank him, but he won't know why. To him, my home is with him. To me, he led me to my home. In third grade, I was diagnosed with Tick's syndrome. The effect of this is that you have these habits that you can't control. And people bullied me due to this. They called me names such as Squinty and Squeak. People hit me. And teachers yelled at me because they didn't understand my issue. I only had about two good friends. Every night, I cried. And I asked myself, who am I? Am I a freak? Finding the faint voice within your soul, finding the voice inside, 
When the time comes, you can and you must use it properly. I started asking myself, what can I do to help others who are in the same situation? Let's teach and build up our kids to become more. Make them learn the difference between a Muslim woman wearing the hijab and a dangerous terrorist. The difference between Jackie Chan and a little Chinese boy. Make them realize it's okay to be gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgender, because love, love is love that, that can never be taken away, no matter how hard they try. We have to all come together as a whole and come up with a goal. Each scar has a meaning behind it waiting to be told. I tell my story to others who've been through it all too. Fellow peers, no one should stand alone. I stand with you, not in front, not behind. Find the faint voice now. Tell your story, make your mark. Let your voice be heard. Not alone, but together, one love. actors they were terrific and we thank them for putting their heart and their soul into this project our goal in reading these selected writings is to help parents and teachers understand some of the problems facing our students and create ways to reduce the occurrence of violence and help heal its harmful effects now when violent behavior turns criminal our criminal justice system must respond and today's luncheon is really like a civics lesson in real time because the people who organize do the right thing here in Palm Beach County are the people who comprise the four branches of our criminal justice system. Sheriff Rick, Rick Bradshaw, the chief law enforcement officer, Dave Ehrenberg, our prosecutor, Carrie Howard, our public defender, and of course Judge Harper represents the judicial branch. Each of these people care deeply about you as students. They don't want to see you charged with the crime. They don't want to see you prosecuted. They don't want to have to tell your story and defend you. They don't want to see you in their courtroom. We want you to take the messages that you heard today and do something about it. Before we leave, I would like you to help me if you could thank a couple more of our partners in this program. I want to recognize TEN, that's the Education Network. They play a crucial role in producing this luncheon. Dave McKinley is their chief engineer, and with their support and advice, we're able to actually produce this banquet as a feature, and you will be able to see it on TEN. We're also extremely grateful to many of the volunteers who helped organize this event, and I can't name them all specifically, but I want to thank Elsa Martinez, who works in my law firm and serves as the volunteer coordinator. She is responsible for organizing over 20 volunteers from Royal Palm High School, Central High School, Santa Lucia's High School, John I. Leonard High School, Palm Springs Middle School, and Palm Beach State College. We, of course, want to thank our caterers, Julie and Aaron Menatoff at Wellington Hospitality Group, and I especially want to thank, and I hope they're listening, all of the terrific people here at the South Florida Fair. If you don't come to the fair in January, you're not really living here in Palm Beach County. But isn't that true? Fair is the greatest place, isn't it? But I really, especially at this time, want to thank someone who's uh, very important to me. He's been my friend for um, almost 30 years. I want to recognize the coordinator of Palm Beach County's program, and that's Brian Labadee and his family, including his wife, Miriam, their three children, Brianna, Brandon, and even their daughter, Dolly Labadee. For all they did this year and in the past to make this program a success, Brian is the chief accident investigator at my law firm, but he volunteers his time to be here as the coordinator of this program. You know, we've talked a lot today about violence and the violence facing each of you students, and we know it can take many forms such as bullying and gangs and even criminal activity, but it doesn't have to be that way. Every student who has recommended a solution here to stop violence, we want you to take that message and go back to your school. You know, Mahatma Gandhi was a civil rights leader in the country of India, and he taught about peace and nonviolence. And Dr. Martin Luther King was a famous civil rights leader in our country, or excuse me, in our country, who credits Gandhi as a significant influence in his life. 
The views of both of these men can be summed up by this simple saying. Be the change you want to see in the world. So every student here, go back to your school, to your neighborhood, to your home, and be a change for the good. And our last moment together is this song written by Stephen Schwartz and sung today by two members of our ensemble, Jesse Velez and Anaya Osborne. And this will be it for Do the Right Thing. But listen to the words of this song. I don't know if I believe that's true, but I know I'm who I am today because I knew you. Like a ship blown from its mooring by a wind of the sea, like a sea dropped by a sky bird in a distant wood. Who can say if I've been changed for the better, but because I knew you, because I knew you, I have been changed for good. And just to clear the air, I ask forgiveness for the things I've done you blame me for. But still again, we know there's share and none of it seems to matter anymore like the comet like a ship blown from this morning by a wind off the sea like a stream that like a sea dropped by a bird in the, the world who can say if i've been changed for the better because i knew Jesse and Anaya. Be the change for good. Thank you for participating in the 2018 Do the Right Thing Recognition Luncheon.